This video will offer you some tips and details on how I like to build these flying delta wings from a single piece of Dollar Tree foam board, packing tape, and hot glue. There are many considerations when constructing this type of airplane. I encourage you to use the parts that you like and ignore the parts that you don't. Here's a look around these speedy little foam board quick build delta flying wings that I like to build. Made out of one piece of Dollar Tree ready board foam board. The nominal length of these is 20 inches, which is the width of a piece of foam board. And the starting wingspan is 30 inches. And with the vertical stabilizers formed from the wing tips, the finished wingspan becomes effectively 22 inches or a little bit shorter if you use the wraparound technique on your uh, leading edges and vertical stabilizers, it ends up being about 21 inches total wingspan. These are meant to be nose-mounted tractor propeller setups with full-length elevons in the rear. The battery pack usually goes right about the center of gravity, which is typically about seven inches aft of the nose. And ordinary nine gram servos, metal preferred, plastic's okay controlling your elevons mounted in the rear. And the receiver typically goes here. Here's one that's fully set up. Got an 1100 kV, 70 gram, approximately 330 watt motor. Speed controller, all mounted on a metal motor mount, which is adhered with two-sided scotch heavy duty foam tape to the gift card. Battery hold down Velcro right here. Receiver and the tractor motor setup is a little unconventional for most people's minds for these flying wings and some would argue not as cool looking. The advantages are that it's much quieter than pusher motor and it allows much easier determination of your center of gravity and balancing your components in a way that are logical. In other words, putting the battery right on the center of gravity, allowing use of different battery sizes without moving the location and also not having to stress so much about cramming more of your components forward to counterbalance a motor that you put in the rear. The root cord of the vertical stabilizers is six inches and they are four inches tall. I have a video on, on folding these vertical stabilizers as well as forming the leading edges called fins and edges on my YouTube channel. I've placed a two and a half inch wide keel of sorts, which is a piece of foam board that I usually wrap in packing tape. And it is almost the full length of the airfoil itself leading from the nose here to an inch or two forward of the Elevon hinge. This one is 15 inches long. This permits mounting the Elevon servos in a slightly recessed position down behind the keel for a little better adhesion and aerodynamics. The card that you see here is adhered down to the keel having removed the paper and tape from the foam board here so that the card itself is adhered directly to the foam. I recommend using hot glue or Gorilla Glue or CA glue if you prefer. Having used the wraparound technique for the leading edges, you'll see there's about a half inch overlap right here that I've finished with another piece of colored packing tape. So this is a very smooth, aerodynamic, durable leading edge. And depending on your color scheme, it presents a nice visible pattern from a distance, which I find is highly advantageous in very small, fast aircraft like this in order to note your orientation. I've used the kissing tape technique on all the trailing edges and in fact this trailing edge was generated on the wing before the fins were folded up. So this is one long original control surface but prior to uh, hinging the actual elevons the cut is made here so that this trailing edge is solid and the actual functional elevons are hinged. The control horns are plastic gift card as well. Another power plant option, which is a lot of fun, is an electric ducted fan or EDF. This is a 64 millimeter uh, budget eBay EDF 
with a 4800 kV outrunner motor. This is a paper um, party cup that can be gotten at the Dollar Tree. I have a 40 amp speed control spectrum receiver. I've mounted this with a very slight down thrust angle. You'll see the upper surface of the cup itself is parallel to the wing airfoil and the bottom surface of the cup, which is the thrust tube, is angled slightly up. This also allows the thrust to effectively clear the servos which are mounted just behind it, so all of the thrust passes above these servos. Having this additional weight in the rear did necessitate me cantilevering the battery mount uh, slightly past the leading edge of the plane. Uh, another option would be to mount the EDF a few inches farther forward and the battery a few inches back but I took advantage of that situation and put a little nose uh, landing gear which I've affixed to this piece of uh, carbon fiber plate right here which is just a piece of scrap I got on eBay and on the fins I've used some gift cards just stuck on with two-sided foam tape right there and this plane will actually easily take off from short grass and from concrete uh, just by throttling up and taking right off. This carbon fiber plate is two millimeters thick. It's a one inch wide. It's a 12 inch long piece. I've got this on eBay from a guy that I believe does custom car parts and sells the scraps for a few dollars. This is adhered to the keel in this case. I've made three inches wide with a two-sided foam tape and I've just got a wad of foam board right here wrapped up in duct tape that rests right in front of the battery so in the event of a crash the battery will crumple the foam board and in effect decelerate itself a little bit and maybe rescue the battery. I've clocked this plane going 75 miles per hour and there are certainly faster planes but for a, a $20 power plant EDF and a 3 cell ordinary 2200 milliamp hour battery like this. I think that's fairly respectable in a park this size that I fly in. Measure two inches centered at the long edge of the foam board for the nose. Two inches at the wing tips at both sides. Here and here. Make those cuts diagonally on both sides. Then form your leading edges with the wraparound tape or other technique, whatever you prefer. Form the trailing edge with the kissing tape or whatever technique you prefer. At that point, separate your vertical stabilizer, what will be your vertical stabilizer, from the elevon with at least a half an inch gap. This will give good clearance of the elevon relative to the vertical stabilizer. Then form the hinge for your elevon all the way across at one time is fine. Then find the center and cut a gap accordingly between the elevons. An eighth to a quarter inch is good. Then apply the keel, which is a two to three inch strip of foam board covered with tape if you prefer. That goes from the very nose to one to two inches short of coming to the hinge here and that will provide a place to put your servos with two-sided foam tape or glue, your receiver, battery hold down, which in this case I've just put a velcro strap actually underneath the keel, or you could use a gift card on top of that with the velcro under the gift card, and then the power plant accordingly.